Hello and welcome guys. Today not in the hangar but on our terrace. I want to do some evening shots and some night shots uh, in a comparison to the HS1177 cam. I have the Run Cam Owl Plus. So for this comparison I have the Runcam All Plus installed in the Vortex here and I have the older HS1177 Fox here cam on top here. On the receiving side I have these two monitors which come from the Quantum V2 goggles. They are fed with the three cell battery here and on the back we have the Quantum Autoscan receiver with two independently working receivers so I'm on channel 1 and channel 7 far enough to see different images okay so let's set up the receiver in independent mode left right is the one receiver set to A1 and the other is at A7 I'm supplying power to the HS 1177. Okay, so there are some color and image distortions on the HS 1177 because of the receiver not fitting very well to the transmitter. But in most cases, you can see the image quite good. And it's about 45 minutes to sunset. As far as I see, the colors on the owl are really better. They are really looking good. How do brightness changes work? Because the HS1177 is a CCD cam and the owl is an MCCD. In this shot you can see the advantage of the HS1177 in, on daylight also. You see the ground and the sky. And on the owl the sky gets washed out a bit. So that's a slight disadvantage of the MCCD of the owl. So you see if the owl is even flyable under normal daylight conditions because it would be cool to have a cam that you can always leave on and have night flying capabilities and good day flying. But yeah, I, d I don't think you will get both. Short tour around the setup. Here's my cam. Okay guys, it's right after sunset, but we have still a lot of light. This is the new situation. Still way more color saturation on the owl, of course. But it would be totally fine to fly with the HS1177 in these sunset conditions. So if you're just flying uh, right after sunset, you can go with the HS1177. I think I had the white balance wrong here because I don't have a sunburn like this. Here is my UFO in the background. Oh, I really love the light, LED lights. Sky looks about the same, I'd say. Next shot will be in darker conditions. See you. In the meantime, it's 
quite dark. I mean, you can see the sky and some clouds, but yeah, it's. I don't think that you could fly with the HS1177. We'll see if you could fly with the Owl. So, as you can see, now we are in black-white mode on the OWL cam. But it would be, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of noise, but it would be flyable. Where on the HS uh, you wouldn't see much now. So, yeah, but in the total dark down there in the wood. No chance. Against the sky, fine. Contrast, good. Noise. Gonna simulate a little flight for you. I don't think that you can fly in more darkness than this. Now it's officially pitch black. We have a star, starlit night, but not too much of light. So how dark is it? It is really dark outside. Okay, so it's really dark. Uh, still owl on the left. Let's see what rest light we can catch with the HS1177. Yeah, you, you just see a few a few lights from houses surrounding in the city and I don't think that you can really fly in pitch black situations with the owl as well. To be honest, I don't see that much of an advantage with the owl here, but yeah, maybe it's yeah, in absolutely no light here. I still can see a few clouds. I can hardly see it with my eyes. Maybe if you crank up your video goggles all the way and get some more lightning, I don't know. In pitch black I'm not sure if I would fly with the All Plus, but yeah, in these darker situations and in dark woods or whatever, uh, it, was, it would definitely be an advantage. Let's see in a bright sunlight tomorrow shot if it is a good uh, camp to fly in daylight situations. If you stare in direct sunlight, you can see the ground really good. So, what about the darker parts, the shadowy parts? They are not so... not so well lit. The HS1177 Okay, and we see a difference, yeah? You can recognize more stuff in the shadows. So definitely more dynamic range. Yeah. If you check the corner with the cam, I mean everything is really bright, bright lit. But in the shadows here you can hardly see the camera equipment. Uh, and with the HS1177, with the CCD cam, you see such details. So this is about the trade-off. Not so much details in the shadows. But, yeah, brighter colors, more vivid colors, uh, good sharpness. Yeah, and sure not a bad compromise to fly. The HS, you could see the sun a bit better, but you have this nasty vertical bar in the sun. HS. Oh, it's very slow. The CCD is really slow from dark to bright. It almost takes forever. Did you see that? Try to cover those. One, two. Three seconds or so. 
Put the owl. The owl is there in under one second. So extreme light change conditions, better with the owl. So let me stop the recordings and try to give you a conclusion about these two cams. I mean, if you already have the HS1177 installed, I wouldn't see a big need to change it to the owl. Because, yeah, unless you fly in, unless you want to fly at night, which you can't on, on, on pitch black nights, as I saw yesterday, but you will be able to fly in, in almost dark conditions or in dark buildings or something like that. Then, of course, you need a specialty cam like this. If you still have the stock cam, for example, on the Vortex, which is a CMOS cam, which isn't very good with light handling, then the, the OWL could be an improvement and it's yeah, more flexible to fly in different light conditions than the HS1177. If you're a pure racer and if you purely fly in daylight and you need super fast light handling or a super high dynamic range then stay with CCD cams because they are superior. For the pros, HS 1177 still be okay. For guys that want flexibility, that want to be able to fly in the night and have really good colors. And yeah, one thing that I liked was to see how fast the owl changed from uh, blocked by hand to staring direct in the sun. It was under a second. And the HS 1177 took three three seconds or so, really long, and in this time you could have crashed already. So fast light handling, definitely the the hour. For installation, I think you can use the same cable that you use with the CMOS cam, so you don't have to solder a cable. Okay, so thanks for watching this review. Hope you liked it. Uh, check out the description to get some details, to get a link to the cam. Uh, tell me what your findings are in the comments. And yeah, leave me some recommendations what to review next, what to improve over my videos and so forth. Thanks for watching, bye!